This is the Sony PXW Z150 4K XD Cam camcorder. In this video, we will take a look at the parts of the camera, removing and inserting your camera battery, charging your camera battery and inserting the power adapter, formatting your SD card to record your videos, menu settings, and manual settings. Now let's take a look at the parts of the camera. In the front of the camera, we have the lens hood with the lens cover lever to open and close the lens cover. Then we have these three rings. The first ring is your focus ring to adjust focus. Next is a zoom ring. And then finally, we have our aperture ring to set your iris by f-stop. Over here, we have our ND filter. Now ND filter, you always wanna check that this is set to clear. So it should be the bottom setting. And then if you're doing anything outside where you may need an ND filter, which is a neutral density filter, you would set it accordingly to one, two, or three as much as you would need to cut down on the light outside. So now we have iris, auto manual toggle button. We have focus, auto manual toggle button. If it's in, if these are in manual or auto, it would show up on your LCD screen as an icon or your viewfinder. We have WB set for white balance set. We have status, which toggles sound information on your viewfinder and LCD screen. We have SNQ that deals with the speed. And again, a display toggle to display what's on screen. The slot select allows you to select between slot A and slot B. You can put in two SD cards into either of these and slot select allows you to choose one or the other. Okay, we're going to cover the audio levels in this section in a future video. Here we have the manual lever. The manual lever allows you to navigate through selections between gain white balance, and shutter settings once you're in those menus. Here we have the full auto button. So if you're in full auto, there's a green LED light behind this button. So you will know if you're in full auto. If you don't see the light, you know you're not in full auto. And here we have our on standby switch to power the camera, move the switch, over to the on position. You'll notice as you power it on, the full auto button goes on. You wanna make sure that gets toggled off so you could adjust your manual settings. Up here, we have our viewfinder LCD panel button. The viewfinder LCD panel button lets us toggle between viewfinder and LCD. There's a sensor right by our viewfinder that if it's covered, the LCD screen will turn black because it thinks you're putting your face to the eye cup to look into the viewfinder. So if your screen goes black on your LCD screen and you're primarily using your LCD screen, make sure you press this button to toggle for that feature. Next, we'll look at the back of the camera. We have battery release. So whenever you're going to release these batteries, hold the battery release button and push the battery up. Here we have our uh, slot A and slot B SD card input. And now we have our SD card. We wanna make sure that we're properly putting in our SD card into the slot. So it's going pin side out and into the camera. And it's spring loaded. We'll see a red light appear if it's properly been inserted. 
Now make sure that you don't, let me just focus. Make sure you, when you're uh, putting these SD cards in, you're not formatting them on your computer. It, uh, we notice with these cameras that if you format it to NTFS, which is the Mac format, it will not recognize at all on these cameras and you'll have to go back and reformat it to XFAT or FAT32. Okay, at the bottom, we have our headphone and this is a remote control. So the green is to plug in your headphones. You should always have your headphones plugged in, monitoring the, the sound that's coming into the camera. Okay, next we have our AV out. So here it's SDI out. Um, it's video, audio. Down here is HDMI and there's a, there's a multi out at the very bottom. So HDMI and multi out. And over here is our DC in. And make sure that the threading aligns. So you'll see that there's a little center thread that aligns with threading here. Our plug into the wall outlet and this will charge the camera battery having this plugged in. It will also charge your camera so your camera will be coming from the power from the wall outlet instead of the battery. Okay, and looking at this side of the camera, um, we have our grip here to uh, hold the camera and where the, your thumb would land, and where your thumb would land is our record start stop. Okay, so it would record, you'll see in the LCD screen, it indicates that you're recording. And up here, we have our last scene. So if you shot something and you wanna check for reference and you always should to make sure uh, you check sound and you check image is how you want it, you can check with last scene then we have focus magnification. Focus mag. Focus mag will jump into the image on the LCD screen or the viewfinder so you could get critical focus. It's a focus assist. Um, if you're shooting in HD or 4K on these small screens, it's difficult to know if you're in focus or you're not in focus, um, or especially critical focus. So it's one way and there's other ways there's one it's one way of making sure that you're in critical focus and we also have our zoom rocker so w for wide t for telephoto wide zooms out t zooms in and up here we have our xlr inputs again we'll be doing a future video on sound and we'll cover that material. Okay, so now we're going to open up our LCD screen. And here we can see we have our menu button. We have these arrow navigation buttons to go through the various selections. We have our set button to set a selection. We have our thumbnail button that toggles between our playback and our camera and it gives you the option to review your footage on either SD card slot A or SD card slot B. You also have the option to delete clips. Here we have our handle zoom rocker for telephoto and wide, and we have a record start stop as well. So now that we have our SD card in the camera, the next step is to go to menu 
and we want to navigate from camera down to other and we're going to format our SD card it's important when you're formatting your SD card that there's nothing of importance or value on your SD card because it's going to erase everything on your card so we go down to media format we click set we select which slot here I have card slot A so I'll select A and it tells us media format format all data will be deleted it takes 13 seconds I'll click OK and it's done okay so you should format when you first get your SD card and again format when you have all your media transferred to your external drive and you want to clear out your SD card to make room but you first need to make sure that all your content is in fact on your external hard drive or wherever you're storing your content and you're not erasing anything that's original that you didn't make a transfer of okay so next step is we want to be able to start using the camera and build up the settings from the ground up and why would we do that well sometimes you'll get the camera and people make different changes somebody messed around with the slow motion uh, feature somebody did something with the sound setting uh, well if they did it for their project it doesn't really mean that it's going to work for your project and it could be detrimental to your production so what we want to do is go back to the others and go all the way down to the very bottom to initialize okay so we're gonna click initialize and what this does is it resets to default settings and reboots the camera back to the factory default settings it does not affect anything with your SD card or your media it only affects the camera itself we'll click OK it's gonna reset Okay, we get the we set our time and date so once you set your time and date you want to click OK and uh, and now we want to make sure that our settings are correct okay so next we go down to record out and we want to go to record settings rec set and file format now XAVC HD that's fine that's what we're using and for record format by default it changes it to 1080 60i now I'm going to go in here and change it to 1080 60p and it's 50 megabits per second okay if your project calls for uh, 30p there's a 50 megabit per second or 24p there's a 50 megabit per second option for those um, theoretically you'll get a better quality with a higher bit rate and we click and you for end so now we've changed that and you should be good for your record settings from this point so now let's take a look at our uh, some of our features on the outside of the camera so here we have gain and gain should only be used when there's no other option if I press gain here we'll see it on the menu and if I press it again it's gonna set it to auto you'll notice on the LCD screen there's an A 
for auto. So I'll toggle it once more. And again, you're using the manual button to, or the manual lever to make adjustments. Keep it at zero and keep it on manual at all times. Uh, the reason for this is if your aperture is, is closed, if you're uh, shooting at a higher shutter speed, or you happen to forget, you know, one of your ND filters uh, setting is higher, it's going to compensate for that in auto, and it's really going to add a lot of noise to your situation in your image. So next we have white balance, and white balance, we have our daylight, and I could change it to daylight and A or B. Now there's more options if you go into the man, uh, the menu system. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to press go to A and you want to make sure that you have a white card in front of your camera and you're zoomed in on it, you're focused up and you press WB set, white balance set. And here we could see I don't have it in front of it, so it really affected the image. So I'm just gonna change it back to daylight. Okay, so that's white balance and then shutter speed. So, you know, rule of thumb, try and have it double to your frame rate. Um, but as you increase the shutter speed, you're going to get a cleaner image wherever there's motion. If you have a low shutter speed, you're going to end up getting trails because the shutter, it's, it's like a sample rate and it's letting more light in and closing it at an eight. And then it speeds up. And as it speeds up, it cuts down on the light, but we get cleaner uh, image without motion blur. Okay. And then, uh, then we have our status. So the status button, you could see a better VU meter for checking sound. And um, S and Q, we could uh, do a special video for in the future if there's enough requests. And for display, that's really just to toggle your LCD screen or your viewfinder display to have nothing on screen or additional information. Okay, and that's, that's pretty much your settings on the outside. Okay, so now we're gonna do the menus. So our first menu is camera set. And here we could see we have AGC limit, which is auto gain control. Let's actually set this to zero to be safe. Um, white balance preset, you could toggle where it's indoor or outdoor. So um, on when we went to the selection, it had the outdoor as the option. We could also do indoor. Um, it You could set by color temperature, AE shift. Um, zoom set, we wanna make sure that we're an optical zoom only never do digital zoom. It's an artificial zoom that ends up uh, pixelating your image. Steady shot, you wanna be in standard if you're on tripod and active if you are doing handhelds. Uh, you could see there's a slight jump, very so slight, um, but active is gonna help with camera shake. Also, make sure that you're bringing the camera in to your body and you're not really extending your wrist and your arm too much when you're moving the camera around. Um, you know, the closer it is to your body and the more you move as a whole, the less camera shake you're gonna get. Okay, so active, um, we're gonna go down to, you know, you could put, if you're gonna do autofocus, face detection. Um, Video light, color bars, picture profile. Okay, so that's pretty much it for camera set. Um, record set is where we went in and we adjusted our uh, settings right after initializing the camera. 
Video out is if you're using HDMI or SDI. Um, audio set, this sets the volume to the speaker when you're doing playback. And let me jump back in. We also have a headphone out um, option. So uh, stereo mix channel one, channel two. When we get into sounds, um, we'll go more into that, but just be aware that if you have two microphones on stereo mix, which we recommend, uh, you're going to hear microphone input one on the, the left ear, the left channel, and then the second microphone on the right ear, the right channel. It's sometimes jarring for the first time but it's so you could monitor both uh, inputs. Okay, so we have our internal mic set, XLR set. We'll go more into sound um, in the future. Okay, so histogram we could keep off. Um, I just wanna show you. So you could see to the that little image right here, it, that's the histogram. So. If somebody happens to put it on, you'll know where to um, find it. And if you wanted to, by all means, take a deeper dive into histogram, go for it. Okay, and I'm gonna pause here. Okay, I'm just gonna blow that image out a bit. And I'm gonna go to Zebra, and I'm gonna put it on. And you could see here, we're getting these diagonal lines wherever the information is blown out. And we could adjust which level we're, where the blowout is happening. So I wouldn't leave zebra pattern on all the time but it's good to jump into it for reference if you have somebody wearing a white shirt or you're in a, a situation where there's a lot of light and you uh, you might have some hot spots now all this area is um, that's blown out is lost information so if in post-production you were to darken this image um, this would just turn gray. You wouldn't get any detail. This is all lost detail. It's the equivalent if you pin audio into the red. Uh, you know, it's all, it, it all hit a ceiling and it's just going to sound the same, but lower. And same thing visually, it's gonna look the same, but just more into the grays, the blacks as you um, adjust it. So uh, unless you have a, you know, uh, a cine camera that has a lot of latitude. There's not much you could do about it. Okay, um, that's zebra pattern. I'm gonna go back and turn zebra off. Uh, then we have peaking. Peaking is really helpful um, for critical focus. So we'll put peaking on and we'll change the color because we have white text here. Um, we could change it red, yellow, and the level we could make high. And let's see what that looks like. So as I adjust the focus ring, let me go more telephoto. Okay, so as, as I adjust the focus ring, we'll know we're in critical focus because of that yellow outline. And if I stand this, this up in the foreground, a little bit of a rack focus going. So now we're gonna take a look at marker. 
Um, markers are kind of visual uh, guides and assistance. Uh, you could put a center marker so you know where center is. Aspect ratio, so if you were shooting um, for two different formats, you could set an aspect ratio as an overlay. So let's do four, three. Um, safety zones, so we could see what's uh, title safe and what's action safe. And guide frame, and that's a rule of thirds. And so if we jump out, oh. And so now we see that's the center. We have our 90% action safe. We have our rule of thirds. And also our 4-3. Uh, our okay, so jumping back, let's turn markers off. Then we have focus mag. Um, I would leave this alone. This is, uh, you're going to press the button once. It's going to jump in times four again for times eight. Uh, camera display, audio level display. Um, so this is just what's showing up on the LCD screen. So I would, I wouldn't touch any of these. Um, yeah, we don't need to really go into time code, user bit information, um, network we're skipping, and then we'll just go through. So there's status check, camera profile. Um, you may want to shut off the beep for recording. It's a tally lamp, uh, media format. And yeah, so I think we covered everything else in the menu system. Um, the one thing I'll do is uh, I'll go back here and I'll just hit record. And I'll go back to thumbnail and we could play it back. It's right there. Okay, so that concludes our video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for watching.